Welcome to Let's Crochet All Day. Today we're going to be making this chicken. Not this chicken because this was my first amigurumi chicken and I don't love it. My daughter loves it. That's why we've still got it. That's why it's filthy. We're going to make one that's way better. I'm going to be using this chenille yarn today. It's from my favorite store, Cambridge Fab Fibers. They've got great quality and great prices for their yarn and accessories. I've also got some stitch markers, scissors, and today I'm going to be using a 5.5 millimeter hook. Let's get started. Again, we're going to be starting with a magic ring. So you're going to want the two parallel lines on this side. On the other side, we're going to cross it over. Okay, so we're going to go across on this side under the first grab the second pull it through we've got a loop here so now we want to hold there's our ring let's use our working yarn working yarn is this piece is the tail and then the piece that's connected to the rest of your yarn is called the working yarn so we're going to yarn over our hook Ooh, oh mm. yarn over pull through oh my goodness so we've got one We've got our loop, we've got our ring. We're gonna pull this loose. Another tip when you're working with chenille yarn like this and you're making a magic ring or a magic circle, do your first set of stitches pretty loosely. So we're gonna do eight single crochet into our ring here. Again, single crochet, there's one loop on the hook. We're gonna go in once, pull up one loop, yarn over, um, Everything is once. So that's our first single crochet. So let's do our second together. Um, no, we're not yarning over. Apologies. We're going to go through the magic ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through. So that's two. We're going to do six more. And we're doing them a little loose because then it makes it a lot easier to pull this tail at the end to close our ring. So... Three, four, five, six. Okay. Now, sometimes when you're working with this type of yarn, it is really difficult to count your stitches. So people do like to use stitch markers. I am one of those people. So it's kind of difficult to count here, but we've got sometimes I'll actually put a stitch marker in each one just so I can see all the stitches in my initial row because once you close that magic ring, it's even harder. So here I can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, which means I need to do two more. Seven and whoops eight now i don't have a legit setup here guys i don't have a great camera i don't have the, all of you know all the ideal items so i apologize if there's shadows i apologize if you can't always see my hands um but we're making the best of our current situation so I just wanna share my love of crochet. We're gonna pull this tight. Now, here's the tricky part. If you're doing these stitches too tight, this is gonna, it has the potential to break. So you wanna pull it very gently. I like to kind of work my, cro my crochets um, along when you're pulling this, because if you, just, if you just reef on it, for lack of a better term, I'm gonna also mark the first stitch. If you just pull really hard, it's going to break. And then you have to start over, which isn't horrible at this point in a project, but it's definitely annoying. And because it takes so long to crochet anything, um, that's our first stitch, I'm just marking it there. Because it takes so long, you don't wanna start over. So we've got our tail here, I'm gently pulling on the tail. If this breaks right now, it's a weird karma. There we go, okay, that pulled nicely. That's our first round. So we've got eight single crochet in our first round. Our second round is gonna be eight increases. And so for most amigurumis, I'm gonna say you are gonna use a lot of single crochet. 
That's why they're great beginner projects. But um, single crochet increase is really just two single crochets into a single stitch. So I'm going to go, this is, I marked, this is my first stitch. I'm going to go into my first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, crochet. <laughs> so that's now our first stitch of the second row. I like to mark the first stitch because then I know where I should be finishing. Um, so because this is an increase, we're going to go back through that first stitch, pull up a loop, do another single crochet, and we're going to do that seven more times. So I just finished our second round, which was eight increases. So now we have a total of 16 single crochet. For round three, we're going to do a single crochet and then an increase. So we're going to, this is stitch number one from the previous round. So we're gonna go into that stitch, pull up a loop, one single crochet. Now let's mark that so that we know that was stitch number one for this round. So we've got a single crochet and now into our next stitch, which is right here. We're gonna do two single crochets because it's an increase. Oh goodness, this is tight. If you ever get confused when you're working with this type of yarn too, it's very easy to just, is this very easy? I don't know, I'm stuck. Okay, I guess I made that stitch very, very tight. So off camera, I did the increase. So our third stitch uh, or our fourth stitch of this round went into um, the third stitch there. And then the next one is gonna be an increase. So we're gonna do two single crochet into here. one single crochet into the following and we're going to repeat that pattern of single crochet single crochet increase all the way around until we end up uh, back at this first stitch here okay so here we've got um we finished the third round of single crochet single crochet increase so we've got 24 single crochets all the way around sometimes when you're working in the round as they call this um when you get back to your initial stitch, you're gonna slip stitch chain one and that's how you work your way up. And other times it's kind of just like a spiral where it just gets bigger as it goes around. And that's what we're doing with this pattern here. So our next, our fourth row is gonna be two single crochets and then one increase. And, um, you know, every, every pattern is going to be different. You just, you need to learn the basics basically, essentially, I should say. So here we're going to go into this first stitch, one single crochet. I'm going to mark that first stitch. So that's one single crochet. <laughs> Sorry guys. A second single crochet and then an increase. So that's two single crochet into the same stitch. And we're gonna work that pattern of two single crochets and one increase all the way around.
in my terms. This is our fifth round. And for our fifth round, we're gonna do three single crochet and one increase. At the end, we should have 40 single crochets. So we're gonna go into this first stitch. One single crochet, move our stitch marker up a level. So we've got one, two, three, and then in this fourth one, we're gonna do two. And that's gonna be how we increase this round. And we're gonna do that same pattern of one, two, three, increase all the way around until we have 40 single crochets. Okay, we just finished round five. So we have 40 single crochet all the way around. Um, the next set, the next round, we're working into the back loop only. So it's a little tricky to see, but every cro sti crochet stitch has a front and back in their loop because when you put your hook through, you're getting two loops. So the back loop only is this back loop and the front loop is the front part. It's very difficult to see with chenille yarn. I apologize. Um, let's just say maybe this isn't necessarily a beginner friendly yarn to use um, because it is kind of difficult to see the stitches. But here we are. So let's do some single crochet in the back loop only. So I'm gonna start here. You, you have to really go down into the stitch for that back loop only. That's our first stitch. So I'm gonna take a stitch marker right here, mark that off. So stitch number one of the back loop only. You go into the middle, grab the back, pull up a loop, single crochet. So three. It's really not that bad. It probably looks worse on the camera. So we're just gonna do this pattern of the back loop only all the way around 40 full stitches and then we'll, we'll start to build up our chicken even more. We just completed row six. It was 40 single crochet in the back loop only. So that is complete. Now we're gonna move to rows seven through 11 and they're all gonna be just 40 single crochet, regular single crochet, not the back loop only, 40 single crochet for seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So five rounds. So this is what we're at after row six. I'll check in after every row just to show you the progress. This is after we just completed row seven. You can see we're starting to get some height now because we're building up instead of just building out. 
So this is after row seven. This is after row eight. This is after row nine. You can really see the height coming through now. So this is in between rounds, but sometimes when I get into the groove of crocheting, it just flows easier. So I wanted to share just, you know, I started recently holding my yarn like this. I used to hold it like this. I used to go around. And now when I hold it like this, I'm able to go in. And how much faster is that than... Um, it might not seem it like one stitch at a time, but as you work up a project, honestly, every second counts. And when you're working on something small like this, it is what it is kind of a deal. Um, especially when every row is different, but when you're doing the same thing over and over again, the more efficient you can become with the process, the better. So that's just a little tip for me. This is after row 10. Okay, so this is our chicken after 11 rows. And what we're gonna do in row 12 is we're gonna make this opening a little bit smaller. So we're gonna start doing some decreases. Now, I already did the first stitch, so I already moved my stitch marker. That's stitch number one. We're gonna pretty much do the opposite of what we did to build up this base here. So we've done one, two single crochets, three single crochets. And then to do our decrease, we're gonna go through the stitch, pull up a loop. And instead of doing our crochet here, we're gonna go through the next stitch, pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. And then we're gonna crochet them all together into one stitch. So that's how we reduce stitches. I've seen it done many other ways potato tomato you know do what feels good I think that that way is an easier way to do a decrease when you're working with yarn like this because sometimes it's difficult to see where the holes are to pull your hook through um so we've done one two three and then we're gonna do a decrease so we're gonna pull up a loop Next stitch, pull up another loop all together. And we're gonna continue this pattern the whole way around. Um, it's gonna leave us with 32 single crochets by the end of round 12. And then you'll start to see the shape come together of this chicken, which is really exciting. So that's our third decrease. You can already see that this lip is kind of, it wants to curl in, it wants to come together. So I'm going to finish that all the way around and uh, then I'll check back in with you guys. Okay, here we're done with row 12. We've got 32 single crochets. When I, if I'm just going to pull up my loop there so I can take my hook off. When I put this down, you can see how it's coming in at the top. It's getting a little bit tighter. We are going to do one more round of 32 single crochets. Then we're going to stuff it. We're going to sew it up. And then we'll add some detail and finish off this chicken. Okay, we are done. We're done our round 13, which was just one more round of 32 single crochets. Now we don't need this stitch marker anymore. What I am gonna do though, is I'm gonna pull this a little bit longer. I'm gonna cut it here. This yarn also breaks nice and easily. So if you don't have scissors, don't worry, we're gonna pull that out. And now we're gonna use a tapestry needle to sew it up. And you can kind of see how this kind of looks a little bit, this one's got a weird tail, I don't love it. So anyways, this is our new chicken. Let's forget the old, onto the new. We're gonna stuff it. I've got some of this polyfill stuffing. The first few times I did these projects, I cut up my kids' old stuffed animals that they don't use anymore because why wouldn't I use that instead of buying a massive bag of stuffing? And now I have a massive bag of stuffing. So it's really up to you how full you wanna fill this. That feels like a good amount to me. I'm going to get out tapestry needle 
again, doesn't really matter which one you choose. Actually, it doesn't matter, but the larger the opening, the easier it is to get chenille yarn through. So we'll just leave that there so I don't forget to put it away properly. So I'm going to, I like to squish it. Oh, see, that's no good. We do not want that. <laughs> Why is the struggle so real sometimes? Honestly, it's kind of better when you just break it. There you go. Yeah, then it's a little bit thinner. There we go. And we're on. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to sew it across the top here, okay? So with 32 stitches, let's do some quick math. We want to do 16. So we're just going to pair it up. Oh my gosh, I hope you didn't hear my stomach just grumble like that. Mama's hungry. I, I've i recently been really pushing my kids to eat breakfast because for whatever reason, they don't want to. I remember sitting at the table eating breakfast every single day with my brother and um, never going to school hungry is such an underrated privilege, especially in today's economy. So anyways, I forget where I was going with that naturally, but um, yeah, that's kind of what I do when I crochet. I My mind goes <laughs> to places. It'll come back to me, I'm sure what I was doing there. Anyways, you see this coming together. That's why I tell people crochet has been like my therapy since I lost my father because it's this calm, repetitive movement um, that allows me to really create something beautiful. And I sit here and I think about my dad and I think about my life and my kids and um, it's been really, really good for me. And uh, yeah, sometimes I talk like this and sometimes I just sit here quietly and sometimes I watch trashy TV. There we go, guys. We've got, there's our little stuffed chicken, the body. Now we're going to add some detail, but um, I'm just going to make sure that I sew this tight at the end first because you don't want anything coming out there except eggs. <laughs> okay farmer joke so to end this off I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna wrap my string around it twice that's how I like to finish off boop, boop, boop. pull it enough don't pull it too tight because this yarn breaks and look at the mess it's made just from that already so um Oh, darn, I shouldn't have taken that off. Now I got to struggle to put it back on again. But I'm going to show you what I do with this because I do not cut this yarn here. So I got that back on there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to feed it into my chicken. Doop, 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 doop. I'll come up around here, pull it. Sorry if you couldn't see that, neither could I. Um, then I'll go back in, go a bit further. Basically what I'm doing is I'm putting this end back into the chicken. And once I got far enough, I go, okay, that's good. Trim it off. And then once you trim it, if you can see, see this yarn is so, the texture, the, the pattern, I can't even see where that went. But I will show you over here. How we're gonna hide these ends. So tapestry needle once again. I really need to get my nails done. I miss not having my nails done. Um, so this magic circle, I don't believe we tied it off yet. So I'm just gonna go through and put your needle back in through this loop. That's pretty much you're going back over yourself. That's how you Tighten it. That's how you secure it, I should say, not tighten it. I feel like the camera needs to be like eight inches further away from my hands. Um, anyways, 
real life struggles. Oh, I see that. Okay, no, I don't. <laughs> okay, so now that we've got our end, I can weave it back in here just to kind of get it to disappear back into the chicken. And then I'm gonna cut it with a little bit of extra right now, just so I can show you what I do with this. So, get all these little ends away. Also, instead of stuffing this with stuffing, sometimes I just keep these ends and I'll use that to stuff because they're fluffy, it's resourceful, there's no waste. Okay, so here, I've got this little end. We can all see that little end. Maybe not from here, but from here, we can see that little end. So I'm gonna take my crochet hook. I'm literally just going to stuff it back in there. Like, bye-bye, Mr. End, we don't need you here. Okay, so there, there's the completed body of our chicken. Now let's make it look like a real chicken. So the first step for adding details, we're gonna go with this red chenille yarn. We're gonna do a comb and then I'm gonna use this guy to do a beak and some black for the eyes. Now, another option for the eyes is using safety eyes, but if I don't have to use safety eyes, I don't really want to, quite frankly, especially even though they're safety eyes, I I don't know, they kind of, they're a little, maybe these eyes are weird too though. So whatever, we'll see how this goes. Okay, now we're going to add the red comb. I'm gonna start by putting um, just getting my yarn through the chicken. I have done this where I start further back. I'm going to start this one closer to the top because I like that look better. I'm just going to use my, um, a needle to get the yarn through as well because, you know what, it's just easier and that's what life is all about. So I'm going to tie this off but not super tight, not wildly tight. I'm just gonna tie it. I wanna be able to get my hook back under there. So if I tie it too tight, I risk not being able to get my hook in there. So forget about the tail for right now. Let's use our working yarn. We're gonna yarn over, pull through a loop. So I wanna chain two off of this. So yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through one. That's chaining two. Now we're gonna do three double crochets. I'm gonna turn my work because um, I wanna work backwards this way. So I'm gonna yarn over for a double crochet. We've got two loops on our hook and then I'm gonna go into essentially what would be the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops again. Now, we're gonna do that two more times. So yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull up a loop. It's a little tricky here because I did the sewing. Yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. So that's one, chain two plus two double crochets, yarn over for our third double crochet. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. There we go. Now we're gonna do one single crochet just to kind of bring it back closer to the body. Again, depending on how you sewed this shut, it might be really difficult to get your hook through there. So if you need to use a, a needle, there's no shame in that game. I've done a single crochet. Now I just wanna slip stitch it I'm gonna go, actually I'm gonna go back through that hole because I kind of like how that's looking right now. Um, no, I'm not. I'm gonna go the next one, pull up a loop and then slip stitch in. Holy moly, Lindsay. And then we're gonna pull that loop up a little bit higher. We're gonna break the yarn. And essentially this is now that's our comb. I love that. That's so cute. So what I'm going to do with this first um, tail, I'm going to put it back through my needle here. And what I like to do is go back through the comb. 
get underneath all those little bits, push it out to the end without changing the shape of our comb at all. Let's go back through this last one here, through that final slip stitch that we did. Now I've got both pieces together and I'm going to tie these. I'm gonna tie them twice, but I'm gonna tie them somewhat loosely. And then that's our completed comb. How cute is that? Now we'll put this. I'm gonna put this end back through the tapestry needle. I'm gonna feed it into our chicken. It doesn't matter where it comes out, it really doesn't. Just don't pull too hard because you don't really wanna change the shape. Then we're gonna cut this end, add it to our scraps pile, and then tuck that end back in so that we can't see it. Beautiful, oh, you can kinda, of, oh, that's just a fluff. Now we'll do that with the other end. I hope that goes as seamlessly because that was quite easy, wasn't it? Now I jinx myself. Okay, this one's a short one, so it might just go straight in and we might lose it on the way. Yep, yeah, good. Perfect. Okay, there's our comb. Now let's add some eyes and a beak. The beak, should we try for another center pull? Um, if you're like, what the heck's a center pull? It's when you get the piece of yarn that's just tucked into the middle here. And sometimes it comes out in this massive glob and sometimes it comes out beautifully like that red did. I don't think I'm gonna get a good center pull here. So I in fact did not get a center pull. So we're unraveling from the outside, which is fine. Now with the yellow for the beak, we're not even going to use our crochet hook here. I'm just gonna use a tapestry needle. Really don't need that much. What I wanna do is kind of, I wanna find a good spot for it. Now what you're gonna do, it you're just gonna really come back through the same a few times. Let's get that end out of there. Make that look a little bit better. It's kind of hard to imagine right now. Okay, I'm gonna make this work. We're just gonna do it a few more times just to kind of build up. What I'm gonna do first though is I'm gonna tie it off. And I wanna tie it close to the side so that the knot is like over in the corner of the mouth. There we go. Okay, so we have our knot over here. Beautiful, I'm just gonna cut, I'm gonna cut this. We'll deal with that in a minute. Let's finish this beak first. I'm gonna go back through this side just to secure that knot over here. Cause I, oh, I mean, clearly, clearly I'm not perfect with this kind of stuff. I'm gonna pull it a little bit tighter just so that I get that knot tucked away in there. And then when you're pulling your yarn tight as well, here's a tip, pull it, get that end out first of all, cause you don't want to pull too tight, but if you want these spaced apart, just move it when you pull it, there you go. And then we're getting a little bit more of a, a beak there. I'm gonna do it one more time, then I'm gonna tie it, tuck the ends away, and we will move on to the eyes. Yeah, I think that's good. Honestly, there's no perfect way to put a beak on a stuffed chicken. So you guys can follow this technique or you can do something totally different. Either way, thanks for uh, following along. So what I'm gonna do, again, I'm gonna tie it here. Try and make sure it stays on the right hand side. Or is that the left? It's the right side of our chicken. Tie that knot there. Boop. What a cute little, that's adorable. Okay, I'm gonna pull it through one more time. And then 
I'm just going to tuck our ends away because it's already been tied. And when I tuck these ends away, tell me if this does not become a chicken, an eyeless chicken, but still. Pop that into there. Maybe I should do a voiceover for this so you don't hear me questioning myself all the time. Um, because I also just do this for fun. Like this is, I'm making a stuffed chicken. I can't take this seriously. I'm also excited for how much my kids are going to love this because we are getting chickens for our farm again this summer. I'm really excited. By summer, I mean spring. Stuff that back in there. Yeah, that's the hard part with the crochet hook is that it can kind of hook on things and pull it right back out. Okay. We don't want that string. Let's get rid of that string. Okay, into the fluff pile. There's quite a few fluffs on this, actually. I needed these out of the way. That's probably why. Okay. Half done. I might even cut this shorter. Less tucking. <laughs> So some people like the look of the safety eyes. I have a whole kit of safety eyes. I just don't love them. There's something like a little bit creepy about safety eyes. Maybe that's just me, but I don't, I don't love safety eyes. They're, teach their own though. No judgment. It's like therapy, right? Okay. It's coming along. Let's add some eyes. Okay, I've cleaned up a little bit here because we don't need everything anymore. What we need for the eyes is some black yarn. This is what I had in my craft room and a tapestry needle. What you wanna do, start anywhere else in the chicken and then just feel around and feel where you kind of think you want that eye to be and have the needle come out there. And that way we can hide this yarn easier than we would be able to right beside the eye. So I'm going to just kind of loop over a single crochet a few times just to make that eye. And again, placing our yarn, that's kind of a creepy looking eye. So I wanna cover that middle bit there. Okay, I'm cool with that. There's a little bit of stuffing, but it is what it is. It's a crochet uh, chicken, so. Zero complaints here. Okay. So now that I've got that eye, I am content with that eye. I think that's cute. Let's go to the other side. I just want to make sure that they are the same. So I'm just looping around. I don't want it touching the beak, but I want it close to the beak. Because I don't know if you guys have seen chickens in real life, but I mean, their eyes, they're not models. Okay. And that one is for sure not a model. Let's undo that. So to undo it, I'm going to go back through. Say no thanks. I don't love that stitch. I like this one, but I kind of, there we go. I want it there. And honestly, this is totally your preference. However you want to do this, you're sewing on eyes to a stuffed chicken. Let's not take it too seriously. Let's have a good time with it. Let's make it look cute. My kids are going to love this. My daughter loved the wonky one, so I know she'll love this. Um, just trying to... Make sure I'm not going through any incorrect stitches. Okay, I think one more should be good. I might have to do the other side a little bit just to make them match. Ooh, I might, I might, oh, wait. I just need one more here because I want to cover that little fleck. Okay, that's a good eye. Let's make the other side look that good. Dear other side. Am 
let's make you look good. Okay, that's looking better. Looking more like the other side. Okay. And honestly, I don't do this every day, so I'm also not a pro, but oh my gosh, are you seeing this? The one eye is up and the one eye is down. This is where I'm like, you know what? Maybe we'll just start over. They're definitely not the same. So let's start over. Okay, so I could really play around with this all day, but I don't want to. I know, bud, you want to go outside, but it's raining. So my kids are going to love this, even if the eyes aren't on the, on the perfect side of things. So we're just going to call this a day. I'm going to tie a knot. Budrick, Sassufi. Tie knots. Cut our yarn. I'm going to take a thick crochet hook to just pop that in there. Easy. There's our chicken, guys. How cute is that little thing? I think it's adorable. Even though it's not perfect, no chicken is. No chicken is. Um, if you make one of these, send me a picture. How do your eyes look? Do they look this wonky? Um, that was really fun. That was quick and easy. And um, it's right before Easter, so how fitting. Chick, chick. Now that we've finished this first chicken, doing the eyes with yarn, I wanted to show you guys how I would do the eyes if I were using safety eyes. So here I've done the body of the chicken. I'm in the process of stitching it up, but before I close it off, I've put this stitch marker here just to hold that together so that I can really get a good look at what the front of the chicken is gonna look like. Um, I like to put safety eyes on kind of as close to the last step as I possibly can. Um, these ones aren't on. They're just, they're, I'm just there into that little stitch just so we can get a look. Do they look centered? Do they look even? And then once that's where I decide I wanna have them, I'll take this little stitch marker out and you can see that's the inside of the safety eye. You're gonna to wanna to put the backing on top of there and push down. Now, sometimes when you push down on this backing, if you do it too tight, the eyes kind of sink into the, into your work too much, but I think those look good. So I'll finish this off and we'll have our second chicken ready. Okay, so we have our finished Little chickens. I'm actually really loving this white one with the eyes that I don't typically do. They're super cute and I know my kids are going to love them. Hope you guys do too.